Welcome to House TV. This is your host, Cassandra House, with Chats with Cass, the podcast, where we talk about mindset and heartset on all things belief, leadership, and life. I truly believe that anything is possible if you believe. And so I'm so excited that you're here because I want to be your human sized permission slip to believe in yourself. Anything is possible together because if I can, you can. So nice to see you all. And so this is my 10th annual goal setting call, which I'm so excited to be doing this with all of you. And thank you all, almost 100 of us from all over the planet, um, calling in from the UK, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, all of the things. I'm constantly bringing people on. So for those of you who I haven't met or you've come through Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn or something like that. My name is Cassandra and I am an entrepreneur and business leader and coach and all of those things like so many of you. And this is a public call. So there's people on this call from all walks of life, all different businesses, all different backgrounds, all different timelines, all different uh, levels of experience, years of experience. And so I just want you to all know that wherever you are coming from or whatever place you're at in life, in your journey of leadership, of business, or becoming the best version of yourself, you are welcome, you are seen, you're celebrated, and without you on this call, the call wouldn't be the same. So I want you to take that mindset of knowing that you deserve to take up space in life and your voice is worthy of being heard and you deserve to grow and develop and have as much say in the world as anyone else. I want you to take that inner power into the new year. I want you to know that you're worthy and deserving and absolutely ready to have a year that is as impactful as you as it is for everyone else that you see and look around and experience in this world. And you are a beautiful, deserving being that is whole and complete right now. There is nothing missing. There is nothing lost. There is nothing that you need. There is everything within you right now that you need to become the best version of yourself. Your success and your fulfillment and your contentment, which is success, but success doesn't mean monetary or business. Success means being completely fulfilled and happy from the inside out. That is all determined on your perspective. And we can have a perspective as what we want to see or what we can see. And today, my goal is to help you shift the perspective of you and your year And instead of working on the outside in, work from the inside out. So there's so many people in life that are very successful, that have everything that we think we would want, but they haven't worked from the inside out. They've worked from the outside in. And I want us to really today to tap into what's inside, realize that you are so powerful. You can create your experiences. You can create your decisions. You can create every single thing. You are a point of power, of universal power. And you are a really, really energetic, electric, radiating, vibrational being that is like a magnet. And you're in charge of what that dial system is, what that radio system is, what frequency you want to be on in order to bring to you what you want this year. Now, when we think of our year past, whether it's good or bad, do you know what it is? It's really not that it's good or bad. It's the perspective you've had on it. There is neither good nor bad. It just is what it is. And it's the perspective that you have on things, whether it is what you use to determine whether through your lens, it is a good thing or a bad thing. So I want to teach you today how to actually have a lens of not just gratitude, but a lens of, you know, awareness, a lens of strength so that you can see all things as beneficial and that you're not scared to gather the lessons. You will learn as you grow and as we get older, we learn that truly life is about lessons. My big thing is that I want to gather as many lessons as quick as I can throughout my life so that I become richer, fuller, bolder, and have a better character because I wasn't scared to gather them along the way. And I didn't see them as negative, but I saw them as essential to becoming the truest, highest, grandest version of myself. And I want you to have that as well. 
some of the biggest years, the toughest years, we learn that we had to go through the biggest lessons. But I want you to instead think, I'm so grateful I even had to go through that because I'm now a better version of myself for it. The quicker you learn lessons, the quicker you gather lessons, the more aware you are to learning lessons, it's going to save you time, energy, and finances. And so my thing is bring the lesson on. The quicker I learn it, the less it's going to take from my life and the quicker I can move on as a bigger, better person. So I see myself and I want you to see yourself today as like this beautiful diamond, right? We're a stone. We were born a rock. And as we've grown through life and we've gone through pressure and we've gone through all these things, we've become faceted. And as older older grandparents, you know, they're so wise. They're so beautiful. They're so faceted. They've got thousands and thousands of facets on them. And as a little baby, they've just got a few facets on them because they're just learning. Now, I want to gather those lessons and those lessons are pressure and they turn to facets. The more lessons you go through, the more pressure you have, the more you gather the lesson, the more facets become yours and are on yourself as a diamond, which means you're more attractive of many angles. Okay. So when you look at a diamond, if the diamond's only got a few, a few facets on it, it's not actually as pretty as a diamond that's got lots of facets on it. And they are pressure points. Facets are points of pressure that were applied to you in your life that were lessons so that you could gather and move forward. Okay. So I want you to get excited about what you've gone through up until today. And in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, we're going to have even more lessons. And I want you to like become one with those lessons and become one with the ownership of those things. Because we've got to see them with the right perspective. And what perspective will you have? Will you have a perspective that it is good or that it is bad? Or will you see that it is what it is and it was a lesson for you to become brighter, more attractive, more compassionate, more beautiful, more powerful, more well-rounded and more relatable to the people in your world and actually become more known to yourself. So I want to share with you a document. I have a little fancy link, which is not really me to provide fancy links, but on this call each year I do. And I, if you click on this link, you're going to receive it into a Google Doc. So there it is. So everyone on this call can access that and you don't have to have it up. It's a document that I've put together that we're going to go through in part. We're not going to go through all of it. We're going to go through some sections of it. And this is going to guide you for those of you that love a little document. This is going to make you feel all safe and organized. <laughs> for those of you that don't mind, you can just listen. For those of you, or you know, audio, visual, auditory, whatever you are, um, click on this link and this is something that you can use as the call goes on and as we reflect through the call and as we go through what we need to um, gather. So I feel that reflection is all about gathering and I'm going to bring up the call. I'm going to bring up the document. We're just going to do the first. Actually, I'm not going to bring it up yet. I'm going to do a little meditation for you. Okay, so I'm going to bring it up in a minute, but we're going to go through some things. We're going to gather our lessons. We're going to go through things like that and we're going to really, you know, get clear on what we want to bring into the new year. Um, I would love you to just get a little comfy and close your eyes. And I'm going to take you through just a really short meditation um, that I love. That's all about helping you see things from the right perspective. Okay, so you can close your eyes and have a, just a nice listen. So I want you to close your eyes and take a nice big breath in through your nose and count to the count of four. One, two, three, four. And breathe out through your mouth for four. One, two, three, four. And you can do that two more times. In. And out.
want you to imagine yourself in a small, beautiful wooden hut in amongst a winter wonderland. And you're in this beautiful, warm log hut with the fireplace going. But outside, it's all snow and pine trees and tracks from the animals and the sun rising. And you are warm and you are safe and you are experiencing the environment of your inner world that is warm, comfortable, protective and nourishing. Even if the outside world is cold, white, wet and snowy. And in this moment, you realize that every morning that you wake is a bonus. And you're going to accept for 2023 and embrace that everything you have is a bonus. Think back to that one time where you were playing with your favorite children or a hobby that you absolutely love or when you found out that you got a promotion or your vacation got extended or that point where you were just dreaming that you wish you could have something else and it came. Do you remember how that felt when that extra thing came into your life? Something special that made you think, oh, that's like a present, a life present. And you experience it in a way that releases all anxieties, all pressures. And in that moment, nothing else really mattered. Because in this moment, you experienced a bonus. You just realized for a moment that all the other little things that you worried about didn't hold weight and didn't even matter. Well, from today on, I encourage you to live this way. Go to bed each night having lived a full day, appreciating that you may not get the privilege of waking up tomorrow. Wake up knowing that all you could hope for and everything is possible for that next day. See every second of the next 24 hours as a bonus. Just like that vacation extending, that special gift, something that came to you unexpected. Never let something take you away from living in the state of bonus because everything you have in life outside of this moment is in fact just that a bonus in your life and we are not guaranteed any of them we are not needing any of them to live breathe and survive we can truly have everything within our hearts right now and everything else is extra so we'll go to bed tonight knowing that we've taken every minute of the next few hours of our life to truly take in life's bonuses. And when you experience in them and when you experience special things or you see or hear or be rewarded with things, whether you like it or not, I want you to say thank you more please and as you are sitting here now i want you to reflect back on 2022 what were those lessons what were the things 
that you thought were negative or bad, but you realize they're just bonuses of life helping you become a better person. They're priceless lessons putting facets on you so that you're more attractive to more people, even yourself. What are those lessons that you're going to take with you now? And what will you leave in the past year? What are the things that you know are robbing you from living life as a bonus? And as we gather those thoughts and those things, we're going to prepare for a 2023 with a mindset of everything is always working out for me because this too is another bonus in what could be my last 24 hours. So I'm going to take it and embrace it and hold space for it. And with that, you can open your eyes and you can open our document. And what I want you to do in your document, which I'm going to share, is we're going to write down what did we think didn't go well, which isn't actually even not well, even though I've put it on there for you. What things didn't we think went that well and what were the lessons we gathered from that? And as you come through that meditation, which is a very powerful way to start your experiences, I want you to have a look at this document and we're going to go through some of these things together. So what was it that you experienced in that visualization meditation just then that didn't go so well? Just jot them down. What didn't go so well? What were they? And I want you to write them out just in a line. It doesn't have to be a long description, just this happened, this went, happened, this happened, this happened, whatever it is. And I want you to see them as things that you thought were a hurdle or things that you thought were negative. Remember, from our perspective, whether they were good or bad. But I want you to write underneath there, what are the lessons that you've gathered from those things happening? And if you're looking for this document, it's in the chat. What were some of those things that you took from you? So what, what went not so well? And then how did you gather a lesson from them? Because, you know, lessons cost. Lessons aren't free. That's why wisdom is one of the most sought-after qualities in the world. Wisdom means you've gone through and you've gathered lessons to take with you to give to other people, to help other people with, to help yourself with. So what went not so well and what were the lessons that you gathered from that? And then what went well and what were the lessons you gathered from that? So we have lessons all the time. Lesson is the, lessons are the richest gift we can ever have. And when they're not learned from, they're repeated until we learn. So what went not so well? You might have two or three things. You might have 20 things, but just write, just 
even if you understand it, no one has to see this. This is your private space. Write those things. What didn't go so well? Business might have gone up. Business might have gone down. Business might have changed. Family might have changed. We might have lost a loved one. What went not so well? But can you link a lesson to each of those? If we lose a loved one, can we learn to live more intentionally? Can we live more, like I just explained in our meditation, like a bonus? Live life as it's a bonus because everything extra we get to do is a bonus. The businesses, the friendships, the family, the, all the things, they're all extra that none of us are guaranteed but we get to experience them. And then what went well? You know, well, finances up. And the lesson is that you've got to save when finances are up. You've got to, you've got to plan so you can harvest later. Is it that you have great friendships? So that went well. So the lesson is be grateful for what you're grateful for. You'll get more of. What are those things? What went well? What went not so well? And what are the list of the lessons? So under the list of lessons I'm gathering, you should have a list, a bundle of lessons. Mm -hmm. And if you want, you can share one of your favorite ones or so in the chat. We're gathering lessons from both wells, the well of what we thought went not well, the well of thought what we thought went well, the two perspectives of life where we've learned it's neither good nor bad, it is what it is, and we're ending up with a list of lessons. It's like you have gotten a sieve gold panning and you've got a big hunk of dirt in it at the beginning of the year and you've shook it out and you shook out all the good, all the bad, all what looked good or what not looked good and it fell through and in the end you're left with 5, 10, 15 nuggets. And those nuggets are your lessons. So you should have some lesson nugget lessons that you that you've gathered. I love that importance of having a routine to enable consistency. And when we fall out of consistency, that's not a bad thing because the lesson is that we need to learn how to develop consistency so we can have more. I love that, Rochelle. You did a vision board. Everything came true. That's positive. Isn't that great? Do you know what that shows me? You could dream even bigger. The lesson is you've got to go bigger than what you thought. You know, Mia, you asked to speak in an event and believe that other people believe in you even when you feel like you're behind. Yes. 100% people like the lesson of that is that we're more we're more powerful than what we give ourselves credit for I love that Amber how to live life more focus more on personal development stretch myself I love that Evie save and invest make you feel better yes these things are all good these are all lessons I love that. Increase your income because you've had guidance and a coach. That's that's a choice. See, sometimes we think, oh, having a coach or having someone like that, oh, that's going to cost. But the lesson is that we need to, we need people to put perspective on us so we can shift ours. Because shifting perspective and gathering lessons is really what life's about. Love that, Chloe. Capable of anything. Nothing is harder than my birth. Exactly. Life is truly a bonus. These are great lessons. And these have come from good and bad things. Not that they're good nor bad because they it is what it is. They're neither good nor bad. They, they are what they are. It's life. It's a bonus. Life is a bonus. And I guarantee you, you're going to get more wisdom, more strength, more success, more gathering of goodness from the tough times than the great times. And that's what makes life exciting. And that's what makes us grow and we're attractive because people can relate to us because we've gone through things like they have as well. 
and boundaries, having to set boundaries. Like you said, Amber, people think, oh, having to set boundaries because you only have to set boundaries because something or someone is coming into your space, which we think is a negative thing. But then we set the boundary. And the lesson is that we have power to choose and boundaries give us freedom. And that is a beautiful experience and see how that's come from this. So I want you to see those first two questions, what went well, what went not so well as a big scoop of life in 2022 into your gold panning sieve and you're sieving it out all year and you've ended up with these 5, 10, 15, 20 life lessons. And there what you're going to take with you into the new life of 23, the bonus life, and these are the lessons you're going to use to pass on to people, to have impact with people. They're the lessons that you're going to use to guide your 23. And then the things that you're not going to repeat and spend time and energy and finances on having to learn again because you've learned them. So this is like a celebration that you have learned those things and you've moved on from them. Tick the box, tick the life box of learning these things, boundaries, investing in yourself, saying yes, believing in yourself, all of those beautiful lessons that you've all put in the chat there, they are all gifts you've now gone through. You don't have to go through them again. And that's why taking these lessons with you right now is so important because they're going to help you not have to go through any pain or misfortune to learn them again. You've got them, you've gathered them, they're yours and they're gold nuggets that no one's going to take off you, which is so beautiful. So then in our little the section that says 2022-2023 game plan, some of you, it might just say 2022, but I just updated it with a little 23 slash as well because it's supposed to have both. But one thing you're proud of, just one for these things. What's one thing you're proud of? I'm proud of my courage to make decisions. That's what I'm proud of. I'm proud of my courage to make decisions for what I know is best for my future. And what did I learn? What did you learn? What's one thing you learned? Just one of all the learnings you just wrote, all your gold nuggets you wrote, what's one that you're going to take with you? What's one thing you, you're going to take with you? One of my lessons I'm going to take with me is that change is beautiful. Embracing change. And change is okay and change is good and change is welcomed. And what is one thing you're letting go of? Just one. I've got about 30 things I'm letting go of in my long document. But one thing I'm letting go of is saying yes. Not having to say yes to anything that doesn't light me up, fulfill me, or take me closer to my personal goals. So not having to say yes and being okay with saying no. What will you not take into 2023 with you? And what will you not take into 2023 with you? I'm not taking in any self-sabotage. I'm going to take, stick to my goals, my disciplines, my consistencies as best I can. And not, take in, not let any self-sabotage come in the way. And you can take longer doing these things after the call. We're just doing an overview to get you on the track. A lot of people stay, do this call and then they'll sit, you know, after I finish for an hour or so just mapping this all out. And so you can do that. And what was your word of 2022? And it's okay if you didn't re don't remember it. <laughs> so many times you said a word, we said a word and sometimes we forget it because we've grown out of it. I actually can't remember the word I put for 22. I can't. At the time, it was so, so important to me. And now it's irrelevant because I've grown out of it. 
whatever that was, but I remember declaring it. And what's your word for 23? Mine is to surrender to fun. So surrender, not overthink, not worry. Surrender, let it happen and choose fun because when you're in fun and joy is when you get what you want anyway. So releasing the clutch of what I want, surrendering to it, to having pure fun. So what is your word of 23 or your phrase of 2023? And your intention, what is your intention for 2023? And if you're thinking, what is an intention compared to what is a word? An intention is something that you intend to do each day that's on your mind, on your focus, on your radar. And I'll tell you what mine is, and it might resonate with you, and it might help you, or you might have something completely different, and that's okay. And just listen. But my intention for 2023 is to each day make an investment in my health an investment in my wealth. So those two things, each day make an investment in my health. So I will nourish my body, work out, shine my heart through sweat and, you know, bodily action, invest in myself like it's an investment in my health account. And then I will invest into my wealth account or that is learning some financial literacy, investing in some funds in something or property or purchasing or just doing something to attract, you know, more funds or something that's taking my wealth to another level. So health and wealth investments is my intention for 23 each day. Even doing this is investing in your health and wealth because it's bringing you awareness around more of what you want. And so I wish I literally could sit across from every single one of you and hear what your things are, what you're proud of, what you learn, what you're letting go of, what you'll take with you, your biggest three wins, the word, the new word and your intention. But you know what? We can share them with each other and you'll feel free to share them with me on Instagram or Facebook or Messenger. Uh, and if you do need any help around that, you know that I'm always here for all of you. You're all family to me and you're either business or sideline sisters or mm -hmm. brothers. And so I love hearing what your things are. And if we went around the room, we'd be here. We'd spend the next 24 hours discussing it all. <laughs> So you can share it with your coaches and your uplines and your sidelines and your business partners as well. And so once you gather those things, I want you to think, and this is something you can do later, but I'm going to give you the premise for it. We're going to do one together right now. But when you're writing your goals for 2023, I don't want you to just write them down. And I know you all, because you're all entrepreneurial and amazing. Um, I know that you all have goals that you write down, right? We have a list. I have a list here. Bang, 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 bang. Goals. But goals are just words and statements. The way we get our goal is we attach a feeling to it. And so for every goal you have, and I want you to have goals in health, in business, in personal, in family, in finance, like five main areas of life, in faith, whatever it is, I want you to write the goal. I want you to write how you're going to achieve it and why you want to achieve it. Okay. So it might be my goal is to... I'll give you an example. It might be that I want to start my own side hustle, start my own business. That's what I want to do. I want to have a second stream of income in 2023. My goal is to start my own business. How am I going to do that? I'm going to start selling this product or start selling this opportunity or start selling this product um, that I've created or this, whatever it is. And why? 
because I want more freedom. I want to be able to have an income online so I can do more with my kids, more with my husband, more with my family. And your family might live on the other side of the country. So you can go to their house once a month and spend time with them. And when you link a why and a how to what you want, you're going to have an emotional charge towards that goal. So when you when you have a goal, I want you to ask, how am I going to do that? And why do I want to do it? Because, you know, at the end of the day, the goals you achieve are the goals that you actually really want. We as human beings do go after what we want. We do have a, a, you know, a what's in it for me mindset when it comes to having to take action. You know, what do we really want? How do we expect to do it? And then why? So if you really want to increase your income by a certain amount, you'll work out how because you'll know how to make that happen. And then you have to work out why you want that. And your why will be your driver. Your why will be like your petrol, your gas that you put in the tank that pushes you forward. And that is a really powerful three-pronged like cord of what you want, how you're going to do it, and why you want it to do under each goal. And so that's something you can do. So, for example, you might want to be excited to speak on stage in an event. How are you going to do that? You're going to put yourself forward to your company, to um, TED Talk, to um, a podcast or something like that. And why? Because you, you feel your message has impact and you want more people to know what you can do for them. You know, you've got to link those three things together. If you want to be debt free in 2023, how are you going to do that? Okay, you're going to save $1,000 a month. Why? Because if you're debt-free, you're going to have choices to go and do things with your finances instead of paying for interest and you're going to feel freer and more Mm -hmm. fulfilled and you're going to have a major sense of accomplishment. Like what are those things? And on this list, I've just given you some examples like here so you can delete those. They're just, even if it's to enroll five people into your business, why? Why do you want to do that? And how would you do that? But once you work it out, you'll realize that you have a three-pronged, very effective way to achieve whatever you want. And I want you to, whatever your motto is, this is going back to your intention, your motto. I want you to, I want you to write it out and print it out and put it on your desk. I'm going to print, I'm going to put mine into a um, frame here on my desk, my motto. My motto for 2023, my surrender to fun. And this is my motto. We're going to have a lot of fun and we're going to help a lot of people make a lot of money. That's my motto. That's my motto for 2023. And I'm going to sit that here. I'm going to look at that each morning and that's going to keep me on track to realize that life is a bonus and that what I can create is anything I put my mind to. And that's the exciting thing about all of this. So in line with some of your goals, and you can just choose one of them to play off for this moment because, you know, this is something you want to sit down and go through. The first thing you want to do to kick off your year is set your 90-day plan. So we have 90 days to achieve the first hurdle of our goal. So if you go down the page, what would be your 90-day focus? Break your goals, so break down those above goals into 90 days and literally watch your life change. 90 days is so powerful and that would be April 1, or April 4, whatever you want to go from, from today or from the beginning of the year. In 90 days, I want you to intentionally choose what you're going to focus on and it might just be one part of it. So it might be, say you want to, say this was your goal. You wanted to lose 10 pounds. You wanted to save $10,000 and you wanted to travel 10 times. So that was your goal. And that's a, that's a very, that's a very random example. So in 90 days, if your goal is to lose 10 pounds, your goal in 90 days would be to lose 
two and a half. Okay, so lose two and a half pounds in the first 90 days. Sorry, 90 days. If your goal is to save $10,000 in a year, so the first 90 days would be to save $2,500 in your first 90 days. You don't do the whole thing and you don't just focus on one. You focus on the first part of each of them. If your goal is to travel 10 times, in the next 90 days, can you book two trips? Even if they're just day trips, two times to get the feeling of what it's like, the feeling of what it's like to lose a few pounds, to save a few thousand dollars, to go on a day trip or so. Can you do those things and make sure in the next 90 days they're going to happen? So you gather your list of goals. You've got goals in personal, business, finance, mindset, family, all these goals. You think, whoa, there's a lot of goals. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift them. They're like a funnel into what I'm going to focus on for the first 90 days, which be, would be the first part of those main things. So then I would have a list and I'd have a piece of paper and I'd print this and put it in a little frame on my desk and it would say, between now and April 1, I'm going to save $2,500. I'm going to save, I'm going to work out and, and lose 2.5 pounds and I'm going to book two and a half trips. And I'm going to, I'm going to book this in. I'm going to, I'm going to sign up to hot Pilates, which is what I do every day. <laughs> Inferno hot Pilates. I'm going to sign up to that today for the next month, because I'm going to start in that, that look, starting getting rid of those two and a half pounds. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to put, I've got 50 bucks in my account right now, extra. I'm going to put that into a savings account. I'm going to turn that 50 into $2,500 by the end of 90 days. I'm going to pick up the phone to a girlfriend and say, look, in two weeks, do you want to go to Santa Barbara for the day? And that's going to be my first trip in these 90 days. And I'm going to make this happen. And, you know, when you do those few things, you'll think, oh, I did it. I can do more of that. If it's, if it's your relationship, I'm going to book two date nights in in the next month that we're going to go on or four date nights in the next month. I'm going to map this out and I'm going to stick to this. And this discipline and consistency is power and it's also freedom. Because, you know, if you don't plan these things, the energy it takes to think about it and put it off and write it on another list and not cross it off and have it in the back of your mind and all these stagnate filing cabinets in the back of your head takes more energy than actually executing it. And what I want you to do is get a kick out of the feeling of actually doing what you say you're going to do and start small. And that sense of accomplishment will make you feel confident. It'll make you feel so full of self-worth. It'll make you radiate. It'll make you feel amazing. And you'll realize how, how powerful you are. And then when you feel good and you're in joy and you're having fun doing these things, you're actually going to be manifesting more of that and more of what you want, which will help with the next 90 days and the next 90 days and the next 90 days. And you'll have a roadmap that actually helps you create what you want. So gather all your goals and make a 90 day first set of goals so that you have something to focus on and you've got them mapped in because, you know, so many times when people ask anyone or me or all of you what the success of life is it really does come down to consistency success is consistency and consistency is only difficult when we're not disciplined enough to implement it so we want to have it in our diary time blocked locked in we know when we're going I know today at 4 30 after this call I go to hot pilates I just know it's locked in I don't have to think about it all day I don't have to worry if something crosses over and change something because I didn't have a locked in. It's in because I've made an intention to invest in my health and invest in my wealth every day. So if that's my intention for 23, then I have to do it because that's the intention and that shows up in my 90 day plan. So I want to encourage you to be consistent, to be disciplined and consistency and discipline is actually really sexy just like having a budget is sexy, <laughs> even if we don't think so, it really does help you be free and it really helps you have power. And that's the cool thing about it. So 
Number three, your 90 day focus. And that can be like a, a little paragraph that you map out. And then, do you know, April 1, you're going to write another one. And that's going to go from April 1 to July 1. And then you're going to have one from July 1 to October 1. And then you're going to have one from October 1 to January 1. And that's it. That's our year done. And that's you intentionally mapping out your entire year and intentionally mapping out your ability to prepare to achieve all the goals we've just written out now. And so then my question number four is, who do you need to become or who do you need to show up as to have the habits to make this a reality? Who do you need to show up as? Who do you need to become? And what habits do you need to put in place to make this a reality? What habits could you bring in that are going to help you be more efficient? Who do you need to show up as? Is it that you need to show up as, like I talk about in my future self-meditation, my visualization, the person you are in five years from now? What if you acted this year as the person you want to be in five years from now? He or she is organized, confident, full of belief because you've already experienced the things you've created and you know it's all going to happen for you. So you show up with intention and on time and you don't let your emotions take you out of the game. So many times our emotions sideswipe us because we haven't got the consistency and discipline in place. And when consistency and discipline is not in your life, you will live off your emotions and your emotions are fleeting and they will always take you out of the game. So discipline and consistency are like players on a field. The emotion is like the ball. It goes all over the place. And the most consistent, the most disciplined will always be the one that shoots the goal. You don't want to do what the ball has to say. You want to do what the players make the ball do. And so I want you to show up as the consistent, disciplined, big players on the field of your life. And when the ball comes at you, it bounces off you. It doesn't matter because you're strong. You've made a decision. The ball can bounce. It can go a different way. It can even fly way away from you, come up close, move quick, and it will go all over the place like emotions can do at times. But you're strong and rock solid and you know your position in the game of life on that field and you're going to play it. And nothing is going to get in the way of you. And that's what I want you to remember. I want you to think of that when you are going through your day, setting up your life. Oh, am I being the ball or am I being the player on the field of my life? I don't feel like going, but you know what? It doesn't matter what I feel like doing. It matters what I've committed to doing because the feeling that really matters is the feeling when I've achieved what I said I was going to do. And when we achieve what we say and we keep our integrity, you will believe in yourself and you will truly believe that anything is possible for you. And so... What do you need to say no to in 2023? Number five, what do you need to say no to in 23? Is it people pleasing? Is it changing your schedule all the time for other people? Is it not following through? Is it speaking and not doing the action? Is it telling people just because you know what? When we tell people about our goals and we tell our family members about what we're going to do, our brain releases the same chemical as if we've achieved it. And that's why so many people talk it and they don't walk it because their body feels like they've already done it. So if you get excited and you tell me about a goal and a big idea that you've got and all these things, your brain's releasing the same chemical as if you've already achieved that thing. And that's really risky because we haven't achieved it at all. But if you really focus on actually doing it as well as saying it, then you're going to get the real results. The re you're going to reap the real rewards. So what do you need to say no to? Is it micromanaging? Is it stress over worrying? Because you know what? You can have fear and you can, you can have 
that, oh, I don't know if I can. You can have fear, but you cannot have doubt. Fear is able to get rid of when you come into a place of gratitude. And you can have fear. It's fine. It's okay to feel the fear and do it anyway. It's all. It's okay to have fear and think, oh, I don't know if I can. But you know what? You can't have any doubt. And you don't need doubt because every single thing you've ever achieved has been done already by another human being. And you are a human being of the same cut. And that's all you need to know is that if they can, I can. And so embrace that sometimes you'll feel fear. If you didn't feel fear, your goals aren't big enough. But you don't need to have any doubt because it's already been done. And so what do you need to say no to so that you have more clarity and you're more precise with your actions and your time and your energy? And if life's a bonus and you only had 24 hours left, which we never know when that'll happen, would you keep doing the things that are taking you out of the game? Would you spend that hour micromanaging? Would you keep saying yes to that person that isn't growing from your help? Would you keep doing that habit that's robbing you of your clarity and mindset? Would you do those things? Or would you say no, because you might only have 24 hours left? I want you to live like life is a bonus. And that's how you're really going to change your life and enrich the world. So number six, if you need any help with time management, there's two YouTubes here that are my favorite. And so many times in life, the big rocks of life are like the important things, the family time, going to the gym, our health, investing in our businesses, the pebbles of the play, the yoga, the dinner parties, and then the sand is like life. So many times we do all the life, the sand, and we can't fit the big rocks or the pebbles in anymore because we've put in things that are not in priority ahead of our time schedule. But if you put the big rocks in first, then the pebbles in second, you can actually fill the whole thing up with sand and it all fits in your glass jar. But if you keep putting yourself last and putting the sand in first, you'll never get the big rocks and pebbles of life in. So a good motto to think of, which I love, is early in the day, early in the week, early in the month, early in the year. Achieve the biggest rocks and pebbles early. Don't think, oh, I'm going to sit around on the couch, watch Netflix, do nothing, and then at 4 o'clock I'm going to clean up the whole entire house within an hour before my family gets home. Like If you do it like that, it's like putting the sand in first and the big rocks and pebbles won't fit. But if you do it the other way around, you're going to have more time, more energy, and ultimately it's going to birth more self-worth and more self-belief. Because every single thing you do and everything you don't do is either chipping away or adding to your self-worth. So if you say it and do it, your self-worth grows. If you say it and don't do it, your self-worth depletes. You're like a balloon. You're breathing out, out, it's getting bigger, and then it's, it's deflating out, in, out, in, out, in, constantly through life, constantly throughout the day. And it's up to you to keep it growing and getting bigger and bigger and bigger until it's a hot air balloon and your belief is so strong, it can carry you to any destination. And so what are you committed to scheduling your time every day for the week ahead and for the month ahead, for the 90 days ahead and for the year ahead? And so then seven is about accountability, activity, and time blocking. The best way in life to achieve anything, and this is why people pay for coaches and they pay for support and they pay for personal trainers and they sign up at the gym and they ask to have a walking buddy and all those things, it's all because you're looking for accountability to make you do what you said you're going to do. What if you became your accountability buddy? And yes, you can have have one as well. And I encourage you 
to look at the people on this call, reach out to someone, ask them to be your accountability buddy for the next 90 days. It doesn't have to be for the year, just 90 days. Find someone else that has a goal or a dream like you. And you can even share in the chat if you'd love an accountability buddy and you can reach out to each other. But an accountability that's going to keep you on track. It's someone that you say, I'm going to do this, this and this each day. And each day I'm going to text you and let you know whether I've done it or not. You don't have to reply, but I'm just going to check in and let you know. And if you don't want that, you've got to be your own accountability buddy. But accountability is really the secret to keeping on track. It's like anything, any plane that flies, any ship that sails, they have an accountability buddy. They have someone that's with them as a co-pilot, with them as a co-captain, helping them keep on course to that destination. And so you can... You can do this with someone. You can, you know, keep in touch how many people you want to reach out with, with clients, whether you're going to reach out to do certain activity, whatever it is. And there's a whole list there in number seven of things you can talk about with your accountability buddy or you can do to be accountable to yourself. And then as you go into eight, I want you to make sure you schedule your week and prioritize your day with things that align to your goals. Well, it's not number eight, sorry, just the last part there. Eight to 10, it's accountability and action, like how many Instagram lives and things you're going to commit to. But then schedule and prioritize your week in line with your 90 days. So we're going to, we've, we've gone from macros to micro. We've gone from the big list of goals we want, why, how, and what. We've gone to the 90 day focus. And then now you're going to schedule your weeks out, even just the next four weeks. If you just schedule the next four weeks in line with your 90 days and those 90 days are in line with your list of goals, you're going to have such a roadmap to success. And not that it needs to be full and busy and every single day is packed, but that you have structure like a skeleton so that you have freedom and your muscles can move around it. And that's what a structure does. It keeps the body upright and in shape and then your muscles can grow bigger and stronger because you've got structure to hold the weight and your it's like a masculine and feminine energy. The masculine energy is the structure and the schedule. And life is the feminine energy where you can move in and out and choose different things. But if you don't have the structure of the masculine energy, the structure, the schedule, the diary, the road blocking, the mapping, the discipline, the consistency, the feminine of joy, of creativity, of abundance, of peace, of manifestation can't flow because you're trying to be both and you want to be separate even within oneself so my structure my daily disciplines my yoga booked in my meditation booked in my um, investing in my health each morning with my products that's the masculine strength and structure that allows me the feminine energy to flow and move and do what I need to do and create and have ideas and know that I've got freedom because the structure's already set and I want you, I want to encourage you to do that. And so then I'm going to come now to just a little mindset hack, a few little hacks that I love um, that are going to help you throughout this year. And the first thing is, as you go about life, we have thoughts. And this is sort of linked to what I was talking about on emotions a minute ago. We have emotional thoughts. We have these thoughts of, I'm going to do this. I've just had this call with Cass and I feel ready and I'm excited and it's all happening. And I just know that I've got this. And then you leave this call and you walk into the kitchen and this little voice says something. It's going to be as if you're going to do that, or you're not going to really do what you just said then, or you said this last year and you're not going to really do it. Like something will come into your mind. Okay. And it will be it's only a few, we only have a few of them. You know, we have 80% of the same thoughts and emotions every single day of our life. Did you know that? And thoughts that fire together, wire together. So you've got this same environmental, emotional experience that's happening all the time. It's always the same. It just looks a little bit different sometimes, but really it's the same five things. Who knows they're like five little gremlins 
the you can't do this or you said you're going to do this but you didn't and no one really likes you and all these little annoying little things that come into our life we all have the same five did you know that not the same as each other but we only have about five that we play with our whole life <laughs> And the reason you feel amazing when you go to like a conference or something like that is you sort of get rid of them for a minute and you have some space and it, it, you call yourself to realize what they are. Now, the way we get rid of those thoughts and they're subconscious thoughts, they're things that were implanted from our past. They're like a childhood wound or something that stems back to something when we were younger. So for example, the, the, you just set a goal and it was to do this and your little gremlin says, oh, no one's going to want to do that with you. That's not about you today as an adult today. That's a childhood wound from somewhere in the playground or something that happened as a parent or a teacher or someone said, you're not going to be good at that or you can't come and sit with us or you, you're not going to be able to achieve that or you're not very coordinated. It's nothing to do with today. It's that we're still holding the wound. And what I want to tell you is this, the wounds never leave, but you can nurture them and you can look after them and heal them and protect them. And they're like a band, you're like a band-aid to the wound. You've got to look after it. Otherwise, if it's exposed, it's going to hurt. And when we set big goals, it exposes some of our wounds. That's why the comfort zone is so comfortable because no wounds are exposed there. But when you actually open up and set big goals and say things and declare it and put the vision board up and you see the big figure and you say you're going to do this, the wounds are opening. And we think when we don't feel the pain, then we're going to do it. But I want you to know it's okay because the wounds will never leave. They're wounds. They're like a scrape on the knee. You've got it. It's not going to go away, but you can nurture it and heal it and protect it by instead of pushing it away, holding it close to you. So when you hear the little gremlin, and think, instead of thinking, oh, that's so annoying, I'm, I'm just going to say my 10 affirmations and like push it away and it's like going to totally go away. I want you to think, oh, I want you to look at it consciously. So it's a subconscious wound and you as adult Bianca or adult Lynn or adult Cass, you're going to look at it and think, hmm, isn't that so cute? That's the little version of me, still scared. And that's okay. And like a little baby version of Cass, I'm going to hold her in. I'm going to say, it's okay. We don't have to be scared of that right now. That happened in the playground 20 years ago. That's not today as an adult. And we're going to be okay. And it doesn't matter anymore. So together, we're going to get through this. And I want you to heal the wound by self-soothing the wound and not expecting it to never be there because the bigger things you do the more it will talk to you to the point that you'll consciously look at it and when you consciously look at a subconscious thought the subconscious thought disappears that's how it dispels you literally need to look at the thought you think oh wow that little thought that came in that just said you can't do this or you're not going to do it. I remember that. I remember being at school when this happened and someone said that I wouldn't be able to do that. That little thought, hmm, you're the little thought that makes me self-sabotage. Now I know which one it is, but you know what? We're not going to, we're consciously going to choose to not self-sabotage because I've now spotted it. And when you spot it, it disappears. It's like you sprung the subconscious gremlin. And once you look at him with your conscious mind, he, he just like, dissolves into liquid and you literally have to look at it and think ah oh, I'm going to heal that by saying that you know what that was like little seven-year-old me not 37-year-old me it's going to be okay and you literally will feel the peace come over you of it not owning you because the gremlins are trying to grab onto you and you can either let it pull you everywhere and you think oh oh oh, oh. and then do you know when we feel all overwhelmed and all of that then we want to like get angry or drink or self numb or take medication. And people have to, they're trying to self soothe away from the gremlins. You know, that's why people do that. They're trying to self soothe. Mm -hmm. So they party and they go out, they're self soothing because the gremlins are everywhere. But if you spot them 
they dissolve because you're the powerful one they're scared of. But really, it's just a little version of you. So if you had a little kid that was like, dun, 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 talking to you, if you just said, be quiet, go away, stop and put it in a cupboard and put the, like locked it up, the kid's going to get noisy and louder and bigger and angrier and wilder. <laughs> but if you say, hey, what's wrong? Come here. They say, well, I'm scared. I'm actually just scared that I'm going to not be able to do that or get left out. You say, it's okay. You're with me now. You're with the big adult version of me. We're going to get through this together. It's going to be okay. And you'll literally think, oh, it's gone. And instead of it ruling you, you'll control it. And you'll be able to control the wounds. And we all have one big, deep one, usually. So one big one that's going to stem all of the others. And it'll be the one biggest thing that happened to us somewhere at some point where we felt the most threatened or scared as a little kid. And it will be like the passage that affects all areas of our adult life. Okay? Whatever that is, whether it's an abandonment thing, whether it's a loss thing, whether it's a fear of trying thing or something happened, the biggest one has sprouted all these other little baby wounds and they're all the little tiny gremlins that show up at different times but remember an unconscious thought can be dispelled by a conscious thought and you've got to look at it consciously and think hmm. like literally, literally a couple of days ago I was having a bath and I was like oh I'm so relaxed it's so nice and then I thought this little thought was like what if you don't get to that goal or what if you put that out and it doesn't happen or something like that happened and I thought Hmm. oh that's just like your subconscious thought but that's the thought that keeps me from keeps me self-sabotaging so instead of thinking oh yeah what if I thought come here it's okay we don't have to be scared now we're an adult now and I'm just going to do it and together we're going to do it and it's not to be scared of because I've just consciously spotted that thought and it literally dissolved and I didn't it didn't come again and that's the way the brain can work it out. If you consciously look at the unconscious thought, you're going to take the power instead of it. And so remember that as you go through your year because you're going to have these little thoughts and the thoughts are what take you out of the game. It's never really the action. It's the mind game that takes you out of the real game. But I want you to think instead, I'm going to own, own that thought by being consciously strong and spot it. So when you hear it, instead of going, oh, that's so annoying, that thought I'm just going to have another cup of coffee, I want you to think, oh, that's one of the thoughts. And I want you to find what your five are. We usually have five-ish. Some might only have three, but it's going to be all versions of the same thing. And mine are all versions of like an abandonment thing. So my biggest, and this is me being completely open and honest with you, my fear is abandonment. So I might not go for something or go out on a limb of the thought it, it might abandon me or something might abandon or might no one will show up. Do you know, before this call, I genuinely thought, what if I get on Zoom and no one comes? Literally. Isn't that crazy? But that's, that's the subconscious childhood abandonment. And I literally thought, hey, you're the thought from like a kid at school thought I might get left out because I was always playing sport at lunch. And sometimes when I used to come back from sport at lunch, because I was always practicing for the athletics carnival, sometimes all the kids were done lunch. So I'd sit on my own because I was busy training. And I thought, oh, I've got no one here to sit with. Like they've abandoned me. And that's the same thing that I've carried through until today even. Knowing, of course, I'm going to have people on a call but see, it still showed up. But instead of thinking, oh, well, you know, I hope they do come in, blah, 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 all of that, I thought, oh, that's the self-abandonment sabotage thought that I get sometimes. And that's like one of my big ones. So now you know all about me. <laughs> and I want, so what you'll realize is they all are similar. It's like, it's like cupcakes with just different icing. They're sort of all the same underneath. And you'll realize what yours are because when you get them, I want you to pin what it's about. So when you're thinking after this call, you'll think, oh, I'm so organized. And I'm running down my 90 days. And this little thought will go, as if you're going to do that. <laughs> like something will come up and you'll think, oh, what is that thought? Oh, that's, when did I ever feel as if you're going to do that? 
I know. I remember my parents used to say that I wouldn't be able to do that. So that's actually not about today. That's about as a kid. And I'm like a 30-year-old version now. Of course, as an adult, I can do this. So that's one of those thoughts that takes me out of the game. That's one of those thoughts that makes me think I can't. Okay, so one of my gremlins is, for some reason, I think I can't do something. Write it down. And guess what? You're going to find who your little gremlin army is and you're going to be so aware of them that when they pop up, it'll take you one second to get rid of it. At first, you might have to do the whole, oh, I'm having that thought. What's the thought about? Where else have I felt this in the past? That's what you got to ask yourself. Where else have I felt this in the past? And it might come to you later. Oh, I remember I was playing soccer in the backyard with my, bro my brother and my parents said, you're not as good as him or something like that. It might be something so random but you realize what it is. And in that moment, as a kid, when you heard that, you decided that you weren't good enough. That's what it'll be, right? And then you gather it, you bring it in like a little, pretend you're putting a little version of you on your lap. The little gremlin is a little baby version of you. Instead of getting annoyed at it and yelling at it and pushing it away, which will make it just go bigger, I would you think, that's okay, little Cass or little Dan or whoever you are. I've got this because guess what? We're together now and you don't have to be scared because we're an adult. It's going to be okay. And literally just keep moving forward. And eventually, M, like you've asked, what are them? What are they? You literally start to know your top few. And guess what? They'll all be similar. And then they'll all root to one thing. Mine always root back to abandonment. Always, always, always. They might have little frilly dresses on so they look a little bit different, but the big root is like an abandonment thing, like no one's going to be there, right? So yours will be one main thing and then it will link to one childhood experience. And when you work out what that is, and, you know, I've spent days in seminars doing this work to work out what mine are, and this is like the quick version of it. So I'm saving you days of working it out. If you can work it out, it's you'll have a breakthrough, you'll realize there was one main experience as a child that pinpointed where this big wound happened. And literally from that day, you, you will, you'll, you'll have full clarity of yourself and why you do all these things to make sure that you don't have that problem happen. So I do all these things to make sure I don't get abandoned. Literally, you live your life healing the wound your whole life. And it might be that you're on the beach as a little kid and you heard your parents say something or something happened or you got lost and left somewhere. Do you know so many people is that they got left somewhere by accident in the supermarket and literally from that day on, they thought they weren't worthy of being taken home. And from that day, their whole life is a big soiree of unworthiness, fixing unworthiness. If you can nut out what yours is, you'll free yourself from your own prison that you've locked yourself in your whole life. And it's, liberating so that's one thing you want to do so that's the one hack is looking at the subconscious thought as a conscious thought and healing that inner child the little wounded little version of you that's not you today and don't let the little baby seven-year-old you choose your 90-day goals today because that's what we do if we don't heal it we're letting the little baby m choose today's vision right and you're looking at through these like little baby eyes instead of the big you eyes that we show today. And then the other is putting on your RAS. So you know what your, you all know what your reticular activating system is. It's your capacity in your brain to pick up on signals of the same thing that you like or see or you come across. And it's like a it's like a radar in a sense. It's like a Reticular activating system is the part of the brain that sends messages to look at pictures and things that you're seeing. So basically, for example, I'll give you the, the example you're all going to really resonate with a lot of you that are on this call from Arbonne. You never hear about a white Mercedes Benz. You hear about the white Mercedes Benz and then there's white Mercedes Benz everywhere. Has everyone ever experienced that? Or you notice a ring. That's so funny. Recently, I'm just getting a new... Um, diamond band and it's a specific diamond band that I designed I have seen four women in the last say month with the same band on like 
how like I've never even seen it before or have you ever seen like a type of candle or a bag and you're like that bag's everywhere you know that that's that is the nonchalant version of your RAS your reticular activating system bringing to you more of what you're noticing or more of what you choose to see. So it's you, oh, I love that. And then all of a sudden you see it everywhere because you've said, I love that, or I want to see that. And it's law of attraction. Exactly. There you go. That's exactly it. Um, the more you sit, you're going to see more, your brain will just do it for you. And for example, Instagram sort of does it in a fake way for you. You say something, you see something once and the next minute your feed's full of all the stuff. But guess what? None of those times you intentionally chose what to put on your RAS, did you? You don't say, well, today I want to see $10,000 everywhere. Or today I want to see um, someone reaching out to me and offering me a speaking gig. We never choose. The RAS is always picking up the random leftovers that we didn't even realise. And we don't realise sometimes how, how on fire and how good our RAS is. So what I've been doing, and it works a treat, and you can you can take this and practice it, um, and if you don't want to, it's absolutely fine, but this is what I do. I intentionally chose for the last six months what I want to see on my RAS. I chose what I want to put on my RAS, and I literally wrote a list. I was like, right, Sandra, what do you want? Okay, and I literally was like, I want... So I'll give you an example. Twenty thousand dollars in my bank account. I want um, a trip to Fiji. I want to buy this handbag. I want ten people to do this in business with me. I want to do this, and I was like so real. It wasn't like goals. It was more like things I really wanted. Like I wanted to buy two houses in Australia, um, two new investment properties. I, like it was the things I want. Like a like a thing you know like a like you, like you see the car or the handbag it's those things it's like your goals as pictures and so I closed my eyes and I was like right and I saw myself like I'll explain it to you then I'll do it with you so I saw my, I closed my eyes and I see myself with like all these colored leads coming out of my heart right so each one represents something I want and I see the leads like the it's like lines of electricity wrapping all around the globe and it's like my desires of my heart the magnetic pull is wrapping all around the globe so I'm saying whatever those things are in this world I want you to bring them to me does that make sense and I literally see like a beam these beams go out of my heart and I see myself like you know on the world map I see my little self as a dot in California and I see the beams of my electric field wrapping all around the earth like this and in front of right off my heart I see like a space where I can choose what goes on my RAS and I think okay I'm going to put on my RAS the $20,000 in my account now I see this person reaching out to me for a speaking gig I see three new coaching clients that I can work with that want to work with me and know I can change their life I see a g-wagon in my driveway I see, the, and I literally put them on and I think, thank you, Raz. This is what I want more of. And then I'm like, oh, how would it feel to have those things? I'm like, oh, it feels so good. This and this, and it's going to feel so good. And then I just like for a minute, let that energetic feeling wrap all around the world, calling to me from anywhere in this planet, those things. And that's it. And it takes like, three minutes every morning and I do it as soon as I wake up so I wake up my alarm goes off I stop my alarm and I just think okay Raz and I see me laying in my bed in California and I see all the electricity running around the globe and I'm like this 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 I'm always doing like I'll, I'll be somewhere and I'll be like I'm like putting the things on my Raz for myself literally and then I open I'm like there we go and then I go about my day and then I see more. I see people say, would you like to speak? Someone's like, I want to be coached by you. Literally, it's, it comes because it's on your rat. You've chosen what your RAS is going to articulate more of. So powerful. 
Okay, so we're going to close with this. I want you to close your eyes. And if there was like five or seven things coming out of your heart, like leads of electricity, what colour would they be? Whatever colour they are, you see them shoot out your heart and I want you to see yourself. If you looked on the, like the world map, wherever you are in the world, I want you to see a little dot where you are. And then I want you to see, you know when you see like a plane, like road map of a plane, like when they'll show you where the planes fly and there's all these beams all over the world where planes can fly. I want you to see that like these electronic leads going out of your heart, your magnetic leads wrapping all around the world and you're saying to the whole world wherever you are in this world come back to me like magnetize back to me these things that I want to see more of and you can use your hand or you can just imagine putting these things on the RAS what are you going to put on the RAS is it that your holiday house is going to be fully booked this year as much as you can is it that you're going to have a, a beautiful baby is it that you're going to have hundred thousand dollars in your account in the next 90 days what are those things and i just for a moment i want you to unapologetically place those things on your ras and see the magnet lines going all over the world and you're saying wherever you are in the world these things show me more of these And then I want you to get excited because now that those things are on there, I want you to like, oh, what would it feel like when those things are here? Because now that you've put them on your RAS, you're going to see more of them. You're going to get more of them. This is what's coming to you. You're calling to the world that whatever these desires are come to you. So feel in your body, feel that like electric feeling of like it's here. And then I want you to say in your mind what those things would feel like. What would it feel like if you had all these things? You'd feel excited. I feel so proud. I feel stoked. Oh my goodness. I feel like pumped. I feel so accomplished. I feel like so happy that I had these things and accomplished these things and these things are mine in my life. I want you to feel those feelings of what that would be like. And then literally know that those things are done and they're on their way and you're going to see more of those things. And that's it. It's like a five minute operation, three minute operation. And every day, every morning, I want you to place things on your RAS. And every day I might change something up. I might think, okay, today I really want someone that comes and says this, ding, ding, ding. And I'll like put different things each. And I literally have fun with it. And I'll even say to myself, oh, I've got to put that on my RAS. Because if it's on my RAS, it comes true. And now I have a belief that if it's on my RAS, I get it. Which means now I really believe that anything I put on there, I'll get. And if you believe it, you'll get it. So it's like a, it's a vicious circle of excellence, <laughs> which is so cool. And so your RAS, you can think, oh, I'm just, that electric line's pulling in all those things I want of those, you know, those top goals. And it's so much fun. And, you know, a way you can think about it too, you can think, okay, what are the five, you can write those five things down. The first one I did it, I thought, oh, I've got about five or seven things I really want. And so I don't forget them. I was like this, okay, RAS. And I was like, Okay, I'm going to put this one on and then that's the next one. And I used to go through this list. And on the other side of the list was all the feelings I wanted, like I would feel if I had those things. Like I was like, oh, my goodness, if, if this was in my bank account and this was happening and I would feel like, ah, oh, so exciting. I had this list and I literally was like, oh, this is so cool. And then every day I just did it and I just kept doing it even with the same list. And then sometimes I'd get one done and I'd take it off and I'd add something else. And you can have as much as on, on there as you want, but you want to have like, just like you see the car or the handbag on repeat, you want to see on repeat now what you want and it's going to come to you. So, yes, it's just like you get this like instant feeling of like, ah, and that's the feeling you want to take with you through 2023. Okay, so that is it, my beautiful friends. I love you so much. I'm so grateful. Thank you for celebrating 10 years of goal setting calls with me. <laughs> It's literally the funnest thing I do. I love this call. I feel like the year can begin when I do this call for you guys. And that time is now. So let's make 2023 the best year yet. Because I know 
anything you believe in, anything you put on your rise, you're going to get. Literally, you're going to get all of it. And I just want you to be so proud of yourself, so grateful to yourself. And remember that you need to live life like every minute is a bonus. And honestly, that's going to help you not worry, not think about overthink things. It's going to keep you in a state of this is a bonus and I get to do this. So I love you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for tuning in. I'll be dropping this as a recording and I'll pop it up on my podcast this week so you can share it. You can do it again. I'm going to put the link. Um, I'll put the link of the document in here again if you haven't got it. But I think that we've all set ourselves up for success. So I love you so much. Have the most beautiful rest of today. And thank you for tuning in, everyone. You're all my favorites. Big loves. Big loves, big loves for me. Let's absolutely crush this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to House TV Chats with Cass. Please rate, subscribe and share. And I would love if you left a five star review. You can find me on Instagram at Cassandra House underscore or Chats with Cass. Please tag me, tag your friends and tag anyone this episode could help. I cannot wait to see you next week where I believe in you and your life and your mission even more so you can achieve what you want. And I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for listening.